For the martial artist, a circle creates more opportunity than a square. In a square, once you are cornered, your only way out is to power through your opponent. In a circle, however, you can move to the side. You can use technique instead of power alone. strategist, this is the essence of the circle. Whether a fighter carries it in his head or it's painted on the mat, the circle is the heart of Sabaki. Sabaki rules are based on a six-point scoring system. In a given match, the first fighter to score six points wins. Otherwise, the fighter ahead on points at the end of the match is declared the winner. In case of a tie, the fighter with fewer penalties wins. If the match is tied on points and penalties, a judge's decision ensues. If the judges fail to reach a decision, the winner is decided by board breaking. Here is how points are scored. A stunning kick to the head that forces the defender to turn away will be scored as one point. A successful sweep or throwing technique that is not followed immediately by a controlled punch or kick scores only one point. A sweep or throwing technique followed immediately by a controlled punch or kick scores three points, but the fighter must stay on his feet. Any legal blow that doubles over or decisively downs an opponent scores three points. If the down fighter is unable to continue after five seconds, a knockout is scored. The following techniques do not score. If a fighter encircles his opponent's body or grabs from both sides of the body, no points are scored. If the attacker is unable to stay on his feet, no points are scored. If the attacker holds his opponent's leg and the takedown is not an immediate and continuous movement, no points are scored. Because of an expanded field of fighters in this year's Sabaki Challenge, a preliminary round was added to the light and middleweight divisions with each match consisting of one three-minute round of fighting. In the first lightweight preliminary, Denver's Payton Wolf scored a quick six-point victory over Paul Mattio of Fresno, California. In the second lightweight match, Paul Rousseau of Windsor, Ontario in the Red Sash was awarded a three-to-one judge's decision over Jesse Hilger of Omaha, Nebraska. The third lightweight preliminary matched Rafael Linares of Havana, Cuba against Ernest Marr of Moraga, California in the Red Sash. Making his second Sabaki Challenge appearance, Linares impressed the judges with his straight-ahead punishing style. Although Marr gamely held his ground, Linares won a unanimous decision. In the final lightweight preliminary, Katsusuke Takahashi of Kyoto, Japan, defeated kickboxer Jeffrey Norris of Gastonia, North Carolina, on a face punch disqualification. Late in the round, Norris landed a strong roundhouse kick, but followed with his second face punch, which ended the match. The middleweight preliminaries got underway with Sean Kovacic of Chinook, Montana, facing Baltimore's Daryl Goff. Kovacic in the red sash, competing in his second Sabaki challenge, landed several strong roundhouse kicks while Goff attacked the body with punches. At the end of the three-minute round, with no points or penalties scored, Kovacic was awarded a unanimous decision. The last preliminary match saw Ted Norman of Denver defeat Chicago's Bo Medenica four to nothing.
Norman scored early with a one-point takedown when he moved outside a lunging attack and spun Medenica to the floor. Medenica punished Norman with roundhouse kicks to the body. But late in the round, Norman scored again with a three-point sweep and controlled punch. The lightweight quarterfinals got underway with the 92 champion Ron Luzberg of Sterling, Colorado, facing Hideto Otsu of Kagawa, Japan. Let's join Michael Clark and Randy Randall for the live call and color commentary. And there's knee kicks, but grabbing both sides of the key. Luzberg said this year he trained a year, a month early, and Luzberg is hurt, and a knee kick again to the head. He's down and hurt, and you cannot hit a man on the ground. Tremendous knee kicking action by Hideto Otsu from Kagawa, Japan. We've got a winner, a 2 nothing winner, a little point awarded at the end there. Hideto Otsu pulls the upset. He advances to the semifinals, 2 nothing. With a six-point victory in his preliminary match, Peyton Wolf returned to the mat to face Eric Lamb of Pijaros, New Mexico. Wolf going to work on it, going down, then uptown. Wolf high kicks, scoring well. Minute 50 to fight in this one. As good actions we've oh, seen. Kick knocked him down. Certainly one point, maybe three. Wolf counters. Going with that front kick. Penetrating power. Knocking him out of the ring and almost off the mat. 18 seconds to fight. Lamb's got to score the knockout or this one is over. Hayden Wolf with high kicks. That was a slip, but and that's the kind of thing you have to attack when you're behind 4-0 with very few seconds left. Peyton Wolf overpowered last year. A devastating winner wins his second match in the 1993 Sabaki Challenge. Having received a bye in the preliminaries, the 91 Sabaki lightweight champion, Kenichi Tamaki Tamashiro, was ready to begin his quest to reclaim the title. Tamaki now faced Paul Rousseau of Canada. Rousseau, ever the aggressor, trying to get in where he can do damage with his hands to the chest and maybe make a throw like that one. Unable to do it. Both men about the same size. Right hand by Rousseau inside. Sweeping, but they rule he was holding on a delayed technique. Paul Rousseau is very strong. Tamaki's moving, dancing on his feet, moving around the ring for a very good reason. He's ahead. There's no point in opening yourself up to uh, a good counter technique. And time Rousseau is out. Do that. That's it. A clear three to nothing win for a former champion who looks even better now. Kamichi Tamaki Tamashiro. The last of the lightweight quarterfinals matched Rafael Linares against Katsusuke Takahashi. Linares kept up a blistering attack as Takahashi attempted to counter. Late in the round, Takahashi caught Linares with a spinning back hook kick, but it proved too little too late. Let's go to Randy Randall. Takahashi setting that up, back spin kick, hooking the heel right at the top of the back of the neck, rather, of Linares. Linares just kind of ducked through that and said, what else you got? Strong body punching Takahashi, staying in range, that's a mistake. He needs to step out and then back in. Staying in range and not moving sideways. He needs to get behind that kick right there. That's way too late. 
Both men with spin kicks. Linares is the stronger. Left kick high with a grab. There's a red marks all over Linares' chest from taking those shots. Yet he has not taken hardly a backward step this fight. There's a couple there. <laughs> Ooh, near part. There's a goal. Left round kick to the head. Linares stalking Takahashi. Starts with the right punch, counters quickly with a left punch to the body. Takahashi drops his hand for that block, gets caught with that left roundhouse kick, that instep right to the side of the head. In the first of the middleweight quarterfinals, Vernon Owens of Seattle, the 1990 Sabaki champion, faced Yusuke Tokashiki of Saitama, Japan. Last year, on a regimen of powerlifting, Owens gained 20 pounds and moved up to compete in the heavyweight division, but lost his first round match to the eventual champion. Back now at his natural weight, Owens made it clear he intended to retake his title. Nice Sabaki move, low kick, and then he goes upstairs with the roundhouse kick. Uh, Yusuke was looking low, looking middle. Vernon went upstairs, uh, very clean, very precise. Sa Sabaki technique, scoring a knockout, six points, over in 45 seconds. After an impressive preliminary round victory, Sean Kovacic faced Denver's Mike Hayes. Let's go to ringside. Ooh, back kick by Kovacic. And already his gi is torn. Kovacic fought a preliminary bout. Kovacic vulnerable to sweeps last year. We'll see if Hayes can get around him and do that. There it is, there's a sweep. I believe they'll give him the sweep. Will they give him the control punch? It seemed awfully quick. We're looking at three points, one point. The judges are disagreeing, but I thought that was very, very crisp. One point awarded. Hayes sweeping that back foot, knocking the supporting leg down. One foot, the back foot has to go down. He got one point on that. One minute to fight. A lead for Hayes, who clearly was coming from behind in this match to score that point. Technique winning over strength at this point. Jams the kick inside, tries for the sweep, brings his own leg up, and none of those techniques really landed. None. Nicely blocked by Kovacic, but uh, good countering technique, hung, holding onto one shoulder, which is perfectly allowed, very legal in the Sabaki Challenge, and counting, countering with punches and kicks. Now Hayes, more confident, more aggressive, and Kovacic has to do more than just block. He's down by a point, 30 seconds to fight, now 25 seconds to fight. Hayes trying sweeping that back leg again. Uh, it was successful before, but he needs to, to, to do it with authority. Hayes measuring his man, time working against Kovacic, eight seconds to fight. He's never been to the semifinals, Kovacic. He grabs the leg, holds on, the buzzer will ring, and Michael Hayes, in what some would consider a mild upset, advances, one nothing over Sean Kovacic. In the third middleweight quarterfinal, Denver kickboxer John Kronk faced Ted Norman. Norman was looking for his second victory of the night. Norman trying to get his legs out from under him, and Kronk is on the defensive early, but Norman, with that high technique ducked by Kronk, finds himself off balance. I think Norman caught him with that roundhouse kick. It stunned uh, Kronk just a little bit. Nearly caught him with that right round kick. Kronk having trouble getting his fight going here. 225 to fight in this round. And both men tie up with the legs and hit the mat. John Kronk, the WKA super middleweight champion on the deck there. 12 seconds to go in overtime. No more fighting in the last eight seconds. If nobody scores here, it's going to be over fighting wise. Legs tied up, punches to the body by both men. No points, no penalties. It's 
It's not tied. 4-0 Norman. I have to agree. He was the more aggressive fighter. He took it to Kronk. In the last of the middleweight quarterfinals, Nobuhiro Shiraishi of Fukushima, Japan, faced his countryman, Yugo Nobuta. Right off the bat, there's an attempted sweep, nearly succeeding, grabbing the key, round kicks, now knee kicks, and knee kicks again, again attempted sweep. Shiraishi, not as much a punishing fighter as a physically strong fighter, Round kick by Nabuda, but grabbed and yanked around by the key. And there's a sweep. Not a very clean technique. I doubt if that will get points. Nope, it will not. Slow sweep, slow control punch. Breathing heavily, though, is Nabuda. And again, a slow sweep. No points. Ten seconds to go. Looks like we may be headed to overtime, a two-minute period. Both fighters tiring quickly. And there is a sweep at the buzzer. We're seeing three points from a couple judges. A sweep, a controlled takedown, and a controlled punch. Shiraishi going one way, sweeping behind the leg. A nice, clean takedown, staying on his feet. At the buzzer, a three-point shot. 3-0, a nice takedown. Shiraishi with a quick counter, winning his quarterfinal match. The heavyweight quarterfinals started off with Umberto Leon of Miami in the red sash, facing Denver's Michael Gallant. Both men were making their first appearance in the Sabaki Challenge, and both weighed in at 200 pounds. Unlike the light and middleweight divisions, which top out at 154 and 179 pounds respectively, the heavyweights are unlimited. The lightest fighter in the division weighed 193. The heaviest tipped the scales at 283. Body punches by Gallant and now by Leon and now a grab and a left a round kick nice. to the head by Gallant, followed by dumping his man on the mat. We're looking for confirmation. Judges say no. Yes, judges say yes. Here we see the action. Gallant moving nicely to the side. An upper kick and then countering with a low kick, taking the supporting leg out. Nice technique. One warning that time. And again, there's sweep by Gallant as both men hold each other. It's over. And Michael Gallant, perhaps a mild upset against what many believe was a sleeper in the heavyweight division, Humberto Leon. In the second heavyweight match, Jay Pomerain in the red sash faced Tomas Korzewski, the defending Sabaki heavyweight champion. After one three-minute round, Pomerain had held the powerful champion scoreless, but was assessed three warnings for illegal grabbing. Under Sabaki rules, three warnings are equivalent to one penalty, and Kwarzewski was declared the winner. In the third heavyweight quarterfinal, six foot eight, 283 pound Jerry Harris, a former NFL football player, faced Denver's Allen MG.
gets the right round kick up, and Harris smiles at him. He has a contemplative look. He says to me, he's actually a nice guy. He looks like a gentle giant. Back foot sweeps available. Power punches to the body by Harris, gaining respect from NG. Harris is effortless how he cuts off the ring, chasing his opponent. Now an attempted sweep. Behind Harris grabbing and pulling on McGee and sweeping, the big man was off balance, and he'll make quite a thud should he fall. Ooh, look at that knee kick to the thigh and a sweeping technique. A right round kick to the legs knocks NG to the ground. I believe that's a scoring technique. It's two three, points, two points. They see one three point, points. one point, and three point, three points. Yeah, it caught him on the inside of the knee. Devastating power right to the inside. Three points and down. If you just stay down for five seconds, it could be a knockout. In the last of the heavyweight quarterfinals, James Evans of Irvine, California, made his first Sabaki appearance. His opponent, fighting in his fifth Sabaki challenge and determined to take home his first championship trophy, Denver's Patrick Smith. Pat Smith, with the black top, the red sash, is a favorite here because of his tremendous agility and power. Oh, and the knee kicks up are punishing Evans, who knows he's in a fight. Smith with the right hand to the ribs gets the crowd going. Exchanging low kick, Smith says, come on. Oh, left round kick to the head. Evans is in trouble. Can he beat a five count? Yes, and he comes up screaming. Front snap kick. Couldn't tell if it caught him in the jaw or caught him in the upper chest. Decked him very powerful. Smith with the low kick. Smith with the upper kick. A, a middle roundhouse kick right to that chin. Crowd favorite Patrick Smith putting on a show leading three to nothing. A left kick, knockdown. Patrick Smith showing, showing a lot more Sabaki technique. He's learned, he's learned. His hands are higher. He's relying less on brute strength and more on technique now, and showing it. Now that I believe should be only one point. They're counting as three, but I think one that point. that is the Patrick Smith rule. It's a, the Patrick Smith rule. The Patrick rule. Smith it's a timing rule, which thing. cost him a fight against Seiji Ozawa and a chance to go to the championships two years ago in one of the great fights we've ever seen, where if you're off balance and you knock a man down, it isn't three points, it's only one. One point, which was awarded, 1.40 for Patrick Smith. Nice Three seconds. Back spin kick from Evans. A little bit too late. And I'll tell you what, it's a five to nothing win and a roaring crowd for Patrick Smith. Kadeto Otsu from Kakagawa, Japan, will be the first fighter to compete in the lightweight division semifinals. And there is his challenger, Peyton Wolf, from Denver, 23 years old. An exciting beginning to uh, fight, which uh, includes two very good fighters. Then showing respect, but no lack of aggression as Otsu looks to counter low. Wolf leading off with the front kick. Wolf attacking the body with the hands. Gets his leg up and it is grabbed, but not a clean sweep by Hideto Otsu. Peyton Wolf is three times the fighter he was in his debut last year in the Sabaki Challenge. Ooh, a near face punch by Wolf. It's a good thing both fighters held up on that when Joel Humphreys walked in between them. One of the real veteran referees we see year after year at Sabaki Challenge. And the good referees are quick and effortless. May have held the leg too long, we'll see. At least one. Four judges say no. No points. Roundhouse kick, middle kick coming in, hooked the leg, 
swept and pulled back. I think if he'd have gone forward with that kick, it'd have been quicker to get the point. Both men measuring, high kick block, both men to the body. Wolf landing inside of Otsu's hands. His shots were a little bit tighter, but Otsu grabbing the legs there, no sweep. Half a minute to fight. Judges will decide this one if no points are scored and no penalties committed. It's 0-0 zero, zero in every aspect. War of attrition. Wolf flailing away. He's been the busier man. I wonder if that gives him a slight edge. Slight edge, perhaps, in the judges' minds. It certainly will come down with the seconds left to a judge's decision or board breaking. Three red for Otsu, one white for Wolf. They give credit, I'm sure, to that strong punch that drove Wolf back to the edge of the circle. They rule it an effective technique and not a, uh, not a uh, neck punch. And so it is Otsu who advances to the finals. Otsu with a sweep technique. The second lightweight semifinal paired Tamaki, the 91 champion, against Rafael Linares. The bout would feature contrasting styles, technique and footwork versus raw offensive power. Nice right kick up to start things off by Tamaki with the red sash. Looking at sweep, gets behind, takes Linares down. And the judges like the sweep, but not the control punch. You see that quick cat-like movement of Tamaki to get to the side and spin Linares down. Joel Humphrey, our referee, sets him again. Low kick to Linares, not a lot of power in that slapping high kick from Tamaki. Linares wants to duke it out. Tamaki's smart to stay away, stay outside. Again, behind him, grabbing him by the key. At least one point, maybe him three. Down. I don't know. Is that an effective takedown when you grab a guy by the key and, and you pull spin him down? him around, uh, the low kick added, I think it's a very good technique. Go! <laughs> spin kick misses by Tamaki. He's got the convincing 2 nothing lead. Punishes the left leg with a low kick, Tamaki. That's a good move. When you get inside, you got a guy like Linares that's stronger than you. Move and spin and don't let him hit you. You gotta have great footwork and great balance to fight this kind of fight. Ooh, and on the grab as Joel Humphrey stepped in, the left knee of Linares came up into the nose, maybe the left eye of Tamaki. Spinning and missing, Linares on the attack. Tamaki grabbing the key and they tie up inside. Linares is so frustrated, he is gesturing he can't in stand anger. It. Not used to having somebody that mobile moving away from him at all times. Tamaki showing a very intelligent fighting tactic. Fake the low kick, grab the shoulder, move to the side, started to go upstairs with the left foot, instead right foot down below, keep spinning, use your opponent's weight against you, classic Sabaki technique. Coming off a knockout victory in his first match, Vernon Owens faced Mike Hayes, whose sweeping techniques had earned him a one point quarterfinal victory. Still an unknown quantity, Hayes would prove himself a force to be reckoned with. What a great countering technique by Hayes, jumping on that, that front snap kick by Owen, taking out the back foot. Incredible quickness by Hayes. And Hayes has become a sleeper in this tournament. He is ahead one point over the legendary Bonnie Owens. Oh! Owen says, Technique. Three but they hit him. Did he hit him before he hit the Three ground? Points. Is that it? No, 
I think that the front kick actually caught him, and then the control punch, uh, it, it didn't matter at that point. Okay, so it's a knockdown technique, not a sweep and control punch, but he punished Hayes to the body, and Hayes grimaced on the mat as they come, fighting right above us. Hands up, trying to save ourselves. Nice here. sabaki technique, Michael. I noticed how you moved to the side on that. <laughs> Get out of the way, oh! Michael Hayes, impressive countering with a nice sweep. Owens trying the roundhouse kick to the body. Hayes with a nice sweep to the bottom foot, the back supporting foot. A lot of respect being earned in here. Vernon Owens in the red sash. He is by far the favorite in this fight. He leads by a slim point, 26 seconds to go in the first of two. Two-minute period. Vernon Owens back to the basics this year, leaving the heavyweight division, the weight training, the cross training behind. Simply trained to fight. And he looks a lot better. Owens quickly responding to that uh, one point by Hayes says, I can do that. And he does it with a clean technique, knocked him down, controlled punch afterwards. Hayes unperturbed. The stockbroker, financial analyst, contemplative, builds wooden ships, prefers technical to power fighting, and tastes power there. And it is the same, sh no, this is the chest and not the shoulder, perhaps. Hayes wincing, punished to the top of the ribs, perhaps by a right hand. That's the match, three points. And they call it a knockdown. Three-point knockdown, a 6-2 to two win in one of the great fights of the tournament, and I also nominate Michael Hayes for the Sabaki Spirit Fighting Award. Here we see Owens attacking, Hayes trying to cover, low kicks, body punches, the body punch to that same sore. I don't know if it's a rib, it's the shoulder, it's, it's right up there, and Hayes couldn't take it anymore. It was that from that first technique where he landed on it. You're looking at Ted Norman from Denver, Colorado. The medical student, the favorite is right there. Nobuhiro Shalaishi from Fukushima, Japan. Call for points. Two, two judges say yes, two say no, we'll fight on. No points. Norman now gritting his teeth, looking a little more ferocious. Front leg is almost taken out, but he reaches the back leg of Shiraishi. And now Norman rolls backwards and out of danger. Norman, the tighter fighter. Shlaishi, the more relaxed fighter, has his Greek ab uh, grab, though. That was no sweep. That was merely a fall down with a controlled punch. Every time they get together, they, they, they hook arms and lock arms, but Norman's always on the bottom. I think in the, the opinion of the judges, that'll be against him. Indeed. And there's a sweep. Do they go points? No. No points. None grabbing of the judges. With, grabbing with both arms, one one point from one judge. That's it. It doesn't stand. There are no points and no penalties, but I've got to believe now that Ted Norman is behind Shiraishi. Ten seconds to fight. Oh, there's a sweep. Oh, not a control punch. He hit Norman in the head. Certainly not a controlled hard. punch. I'm not sure if the judges saw it. One judge saw it. Waving penalty. And so Shiraishi. Uh-oh, uh-oh. One the penalty. Buzzer. One penalty at the buzzer. That could not not enough. It's still 1-0. It's a point. And again, twice now. Shiraishi scoring at the buzzer, a three-point shot to Floor Nobuda. Now a one-point takedown. Shiraishi moving quickly to the outside. Norman trying with that low kick, trying to go the other way. A little wrestling match. Shiraishi down.
In the first heavyweight semifinal, Michael Gallant faced Tomasz Kwarzewski. Both fighters weighed in at 200 pounds, and both men were coming off tough first round matches. Let's go to Michael and Randy. All right, you're looking at the defending heavyweight champion, Tomasz Kwarzewski. Taking on the surprise of the semifinals, Michael Gallant from Denver. Gallant able to defeat Gian Joko Nanomi's first ever black belt student, Umberto Leon, who had retired for many years after an injury. Kwasiewski with 10 years of experience in Europe as a full contact fighter. The crowd winced, but not the fighters or the referee. And a terrific technique punishing the body. Kuzhevsky brings the knee to the head. And we're not saying, okay, they're not saying any points scored. Gallant weathered it. And the vote to the judges. Unanimous. 4-0, and how could they have voted any other way? Tomas Kozhevsky, a chance to defend his title. He'll be in the finals. Kozhevsky, look at that intensity in the eyes, going straight forward, saying, hey, I'm going to beat up your body. There's nothing you can do about it. If you keep backing up, it's going to keep coming. Body punch after body punch, then knee kick. Excellent technique. To stand there and take that is a mistake. When Patrick Smith appeared in the Sabaki Challenge four years ago, he was the biggest fighter in the tournament. Now he was giving away six inches and 66 pounds to Jerry Harris. What he had lost in size, Smith had more than made up for in speed and technique. And now the former giant was hoping to become the giant slayer. his power he's dwarfing the giant Patrick Smith nice spin kick Harris raises his hand says hurt me if you can pushed backwards and a jump spinning kick off the end of the mat and Harris is mad he jumps up he doesn't want anyone to help him and he walks back in and now the smile is gone kicked him outside the circle and off the edge of the mat Harris is smiling as he moves in Pat Smith knows how powerful Harris is. The contusion he put on the knee of Alan Engie, he was unable to stand when he left the ring in the, in the quarterfinals. Never thought I'd see Smith look up to a fighter, and Smith with great technique behind, but not strong enough to sweep the bigger man. Oh, there's the hook kick which won a knockout for Patrick Smith in record time. He still has the record for a knockout in this tournament four years ago. Inside of 10 seconds, first technique in a fight, that one was a knockout, but not against Harris. Oh, that was a groin kick. Harris dumped on his seat. Here we see Smith trying the low kick, adjusting his distance, going with the front snap kick. Caught him right at the belt, uh, right above his left leg. That's not a groin kick, that's a very clean technique. A three-point knockdown, no penalty. Two judges say three-point knockdown. And Patrick Smith has the lead, and that's the end of the first two-minute period. And Harris still smiles as he backs up. He's got two minutes to get even or win in this one. Down three points to nothing. One technique from Harris could end it all, though. Ooh, left round kick outside the circle punishes the thigh of Smith. And Smith looks him right in the eye. A headband comes off, 11 seconds to do something. Power punches inside. Over the top, Harris pushing the head down into the knee. Can't use hands from both sides when you pull that head down. He got a warning for it. And it won't matter. 
Time is up. Patrick Smith has slain the giant. Harris with a good-natured smile holding Patrick Smith's hands up in the air. Smith raising Harris's hands. Paul O'Malley signals a 3-0 win, and Patrick Smith, as good a fighter as he is, has never been to the Sabaki Challenge Finals. A demonstration of Sabaki takedowns was presented by Enshin Master and Sabaki Tournament Director Shihan Joko Nanomiya. Sabaki takedowns consist of throwing or sweeping techniques from the front, side, or back position. The foot sweep, or ashibarai, is an important part of the Enshin system. It is used for finishing off an opponent. Concluding display of speed and power, Shihan Nanomiya executed a series of breaking techniques. Coming down the aisle, Hideto Otsu, considered a strong challenger in the lightweight division, moving down from the middleweights last year, where he lost to the eventual champion, Nohiro Tomiyama. And now, coming to the ring, it's Tomashiro, better known as Tamaki, Kenichi Tamaki Tomashiro. He was the 1991 champion. In 1992, he was in Japan and missed the tournament, but he is back this year impressively. And there he is, Tamashiro, better known as Tamaki. And there is Otsu, an all-Japanese final. Otsu has been strong. Tamaki has shown great footwork, keeping his opponents away from him and then sweeping them down. Tamaki said he changed his technique since winning in 1991. He isn't proud of that tournament at all. Much more sidestepping, and we've seen the fastest feet I think I've ever seen in the Sabaki Challenge from a counterfighter. 
getting behind his opponent. And he's doing it in the lightweight division where the fighters are the fastest. His feet are moving, but I mean, it's taking his body with him. It's not just quick techniques high. Second of three, two minute rounds. First fighter to six points, a knockout, or three two minute rounds to a judge's decision for the championship of the lightweight Sabaki. And Otsu's strength telling there as Tamaki couldn't get the angle and throw him down. He does a lot of fighting with his emotions, Otsu, trying to psych the opponent. Ooh, nice hook kick just short of the jaw. And Otsu smiles at him as he stalks him. Kind of a stare like, I've got you in my sights. I'm about to fire. Both men sizing each other up. Tamaki stands in front and brings up the legs. Tamaki trying that uh, look low, do the head fake low, and go upstairs. If you don't do many back kicks, or excuse me, if you don't do many uh, low kicks, you will not fool anybody. Crowd, I think, likes Tamaki, and that left round kick that landed. That got to the neck. Got to the neck, and Daotsu is business now. All business now. Tamaki stands in front, tries to make a miss. He's got a hold of the gi and rips it out of the belt. And Otsu smiles as he chases him back. Strong punch by Otsu. Left hand underneath into the side of the belly, and that's got to hurt. Tamaki, back spin kick, caught the shoulder, effectively dodging the, the power of the kick. <laughs> Tamaki dancing away from the straight left hand. Otsu smiling at him. And Otsu, no points, held too long. Two seconds, one second, jump kick, blocked, no score, no sweep. It ends, three two-minute periods. defeats the former champion, Tamaki. At the end of three rounds of fighting, with neither fighter scoring points or penalties, the judges narrowly awarded the victory to Otsu. You're looking at Vernon Owens, the popular 1990 middleweight champion, trying to take another title here. He's only lost once ever in Sabaki Championship competition. He is a nuclear biochemical warfare specialist in the Army. And here is Nobuhiro Shalayashi. Came to the U.S. for martial arts, and he has been terrific. And there is Vernon Owens, his left round kick, the most devastating knockout I think I've ever seen. She is nine pounds lighter at 170, but four inches taller at five foot ten and 28. He is six years younger. Two of the terrific fighters ever in the history of Sabaki Challenge warfare in the ring against each other with the entire championship on the line as Vernon Owens yells to get his spirit up. They're standing in front of each other. Owens is very quick to get around his man. A lot of respect. They're within striking range. The low kick by Owens lands. Oh, near sweep by the right foot of Owens. Shiraishi punishes the leg and takes one back to his front leg on the thigh. That knee on that jump inside by Shiraishi nearly caught the jaw of the smaller Owens. Awfully close. He blocked it at the last second. Less than half a minute to fight. First of three two-minute rounds, middleweight championship Sabaki challenge. Just like the lightweight finals, these fighters are both feeling each other out, trying to determine what the other, what their opponent's going to do. And Shiraishi jumping in with knee kicks to punish Owens with the red sash. All right, they'll start it up again. 
And a lot of knees there from Shiraishi. I'll tell you, if you saw Vernon Owens knock out in the quarterfinal rounds, quarterfinal round, give Shiraishi a little credit for standing still right in front of Owens. Oh, got a leg with the left leg. And Shiraishi signaling to the judge. I got him, I got him. And the judges look like they're, uh, for the most part, saying, yes, it's a sweep. Good. One point. One, One point, point on a sweep. And Shiraishi breaks on top here at the end of the second round. And there's the buzzer. One more two-minute period to go. And Shiraishi has taken a one-to-nothing lead. Owens with the front snap kick and didn't get his stance back down, lost his footing with that back foot sweep. Vernon Owens retired from the military. Said he had too much on his mind last year thinking about that retirement. Said he much better prepared this year. Oh, after the I'd whistle. I'd say two hands, two hands from both sides. A hand from each, each side, uh, no points. Also after the whistle, and also Owens complaining about a knee in the groin. I, I, it looked like he landed that way. It looked like uh, he landed right on top of his groin. Michael Owens keeps trying to go to that back foot, but he stops. He touches it, does not go through it. You can't take your opponent down. There we see it again. Owens, back leg near sweep, right front kick to the head of Shiraishi. Now he punishes the front leg, 10 seconds. Shiraishi can just hold on, he's the champion. He grabs the key, they break him. They may not fight again, five seconds. Nobuhiro Shiraishi, the buzzer, he is the champion. He came to the United States to fight in the Sabaki Challenge and be a martial artist. He was a semi-finalist as a middleweight in 1992. Right now, his dream will be realized. He is the 1993 middleweight Sabaki champion. Here's the point that decided the match. Brennan Owens, the front snap kick. Shiraishi going to the back foot. It is the defending champion, Tomasz Kowajewski, from Poland by way of Canada. And there is the giant of an opponent, Patrick Smith. Six foot two, 217 pounds. Smith, a chance for his first championship in the Sabaki Challenge. He's competed and grown as a fighter over three decades. In the 15th annual Sabaki Challenge, he looks to be putting it all together. What will he do against Kuchewski? He says he doesn't know till he's in there. Gets the leg up, looks for the hook kick. It was Mostly caught a push, in the air. Not a good sweep. Minute to go. Coming in, a low kick by Smith. The judges say yes, that's an effective technique. Two judges say three points, one judge says one point. One point, it was a timing sweep. There's a front kick to the face, and an axe kick, kind of hooking back over the head of Kuliszewski, it misses and Smith is off the mat. And that that's another first to see Patrick Smith <laughs> knocked off the mat. Kowajewski with a front kick to the face cleanly and then another block. Oh, a block on the axe kick and just a push. No points awarded. Let's see the point that Patrick Smith scored. So far, the only point in this match. Kowajewski had committed to that low kick and he was unbalanced. Smith read it well, countered it. Round two. Three two-minute rounds or a knockout or six points will end this fight. Again, Smith grabs the charging or stops the charging Kujewski in his tracks. Kujewski facing a very strong man here. Right hands by Smith. Got behind his man, but couldn't take him down cleanly. A great saving technique. And Smith lands on his shoulder and he is hurt. I think Kujewski is a little unbalanced by the whole concept of fighting a Patrick Smith that not only is strong and like a bull, but using good technique. Looks like there's a little blood. Oh! But Smith didn't keep his feet. Kuliszewski pulled him down again.
Here we see Korjewski thinking about a knee kick. The advantage to Patrick Smith, a nice roll. Every champion has been crowned but one, the heavyweight champion, and the judges will vote. If it's tied right now, Patrick Smith leading one to nothing. Korzewski, the defending champion behind, wearing the red sash. Colliding legs, Korzewski off balance. Korzewski doesn't want to wait for the referee to set him. He wants it, Smith. He's got the hurry. Runs into a front kick, and now at the end of the mat, yo! He's dumped down, but the whistle had blown. They're out of the circle. I doubt that they can count it. No way there's points on that, but I tell you what, the upper body strength of Patrick Smith is amazing. He picked up that 200-pounder, lifted him, and turned him over. 12 seconds to fight. He's got Smith's leg and a control punch to the groin. No, held on too long, seven seconds. Kulishevsky looks at the clock. Jump spinning back kick by Smith. He runs away, takes a knee, and Patrick Smith finally is the 1993 Sabaki heavyweight champion. For the fighters in the Sabaki Challenge, the tournament mat provides more than a test of fighting skills. Its circle transforms into the stage for a human drama that measures character and brings to life the virtues of courage, discipline, and spirit. Musashi Miyamoto wrote, everyone, everything outside of myself is my teacher. In the martial arts, Musashi's words have full meaning. To compete in an atmosphere of camaraderie and respect, even one's opponent can become a teacher. The men who compete in the Sabaki Challenge encounter much that they have trained for and a lot they could not anticipate. They meet different styles and technique as well as familiar faces and friends. With the exception of the champion in each weight division, every fighter has experienced a defeat tonight. But the fighter whose heart and mind is open cannot lose because no outcome can deprive him of the opportunity to learn more about himself, his training, or his life. In this spirit, we dedicate this program to the men who competed in the 1993 Sabaki Challenge. <laughs>